Hey guys, how's it going? Just me and Esto2 here with another figure matchup for you. This is the second matchup, but to be technical, the very first figure matchup I did was way back a couple years ago with the, the whole Bane comparison video where I had the, the DC Superheroes Bane, the DC Direct Nightfall Bane, and the DC Universe build the figure Bane. And that was basically a figure matchup. I just didn't have the idea back then. So in a way, the, the last one I did, the kick-ass one, that was technically the second. So this is actually the very third figure matchup. And today we're going to be looking at the City Hunter from Predator 2. On this corner we have the 2003 McFarlane Predator 2 City Hunter. And on this side we have the 2011 NECA Predator 2 City Hunter as well. There's an 8 year difference between these two figures and man that's a lot. That's a lot of time to have some changes in action figures. So from NECA we're going to be including the City Hunter figure from the 2-pack. Uh, the with him and uh, the Berserker Cloaked Predator pack. There was a re-release of him single carded but his mask was uh, a little bit different when it comes to the paint. And for McFarlane we're going to be including the City Hunter Predator from uh, Movie Maniacs Series 6. But uh, there's two versions, there's one with the mask and one unmasked. We're going to including the one with the mask. Okay, and for accessories, we'll be taking a look at the McFarlane Predator accessories. Here is his bow staff. And, um, I don't know, man. Like, to be honest, I've never liked this staff. It's just, I don't know. Like, it looks something like a child would have made in school. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, I don't like it. Uh, it's actually inaccurate. Okay, so we got some detail here. We got some of that weird white thing on it. And it does extend, which is good. It extends quite a bit. So that's good. But uh, to be honest, it just doesn't look right. Like, do you see this? Like, what the heck? As you can see, it does come off easily. I'm actually not sure if it was meant to do that or not. But I will say this, it's never been able to stay. And the more I push it in, the more break and the more broken it's becoming. You see that? That slit was not there when I first got this figure. It was like this. When I first put it in, I was like, how the hell am I supposed to close this thing if I can't fit it? So like, the more I pushed in, the more it just broke. So I don't know what they were trying to do here. That's what we got. And it's so thin over here. I don't know, it just doesn't look quite accurate. Because I did rewatch the movie recently, just, so, just for this video. This is not accurate. This is their attempt to uh, do their own version. Because technically, how... Ridiculous could it be to make something so small extend, you know, just like the movie. So I will give them props for trying to make it extend this way, because that's pretty neat. But uh, it just doesn't really look too accurate, and plus it's ready to break right here. To put it in his hand, it's somewhat of a hassle, but it's kind of strange. So this hand right here is gripped in a way that he's not going to be able to hold this. It's just way too large when it comes to the part he's supposed to hold right here it's not going to fit in there and this hand is ex just about exactly the same as the other hand that he should have had but it still doesn't fit either it's just way too big do you see that? and here he is holding his staff looks okay huh? but not really because you see how he's holding it right here this is the only spot I can get him to hold it right here would be too thin right here is too thick so this one which is this side over here it's the only one it fits on. And the way to do it is uh, the way I showed you earlier how it comes off. This might have been intentional for them. So you, you slip it through and then you close it. So I guess that works, right? About right here, halfway, this arm comes off. And you can see the blood exposed, all the green and the two pegs where it goes in. 
to represent the scene where his hand gets chopped off in the movie, but I do not have that. There was another release of this figure, unmasked and open mouth, and that's where this arm is from. I do not have his actual arm, which is the broken piece that comes off. So that technically would be an accessory, I guess, but I do not have it. And here is his med kit. You know, his first aid kit when he when he gets injured, he opens up his dental, like, you know, all that stuff. It's detailed pretty good, but it's only painted one color. There's no real shading to it. It's got all the detail you need, though, so that's good. It's pretty nice. And this part right here does move. There's a small articulation there. So you can open it up. It's pretty cool. But to be honest, I don't really know why there's two peg holes. Do you see them? There's one right there and down there. I'm not really sure what they were trying to do. It doesn't really connect to anything on the figure, so I'm not really sure what the attempt was there. I'm not missing any pieces. And no, this doesn't go anywhere, as I said earlier. It just doesn't. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? It doesn't go anywhere, like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? And here is, from a, a certain scene, specifically when he actually was using his first aid kit. The scene where he, uh, he opens up the little plate, and he takes pieces of uh, the concrete on the wall, and then he puts the gel on it, uses it to heal his wounds. This is it. Can I get any closer? Uh, here we go. And it looks good, actually. It's got all the detail sculpting on it, all that stuff right here. It's got the blue on it, just the way it should. It looks pretty good. And here is one of the skulls from his trophy wall, towards the end of the movie. And it looks good. It's very detailed. It's got a little bit of weathering paint on it, but not that much. It looks cool. I know that NECA released this as well, with another figure. <clears throat> but uh, to be honest, here with McFarlane, it makes me think, like, why would they give you this skull out of all the skulls in the movie? Because um, McFarlane was not giving you skulls to recreate your own scene of uh, the, the wall, the whole, like, Predator wall, trophy wall. But they just gave it to you just because. So why would they pick this skull out of all of them? They didn't give you the, the human skull with the spine on it. They didn't give you the T-Rex skull. They didn't give you any other skull except for this one. Why they chose this one, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not complaining, I just don't really understand why the choice they went with this one. And for the gun, I do not have the gun. Towards the end of the movie when Danny Glover gets the 1715 handgun from uh, the Elder Predator, this McFarland Predator did include that, but I don't have it. But to be honest, I don't really care because that gun didn't look that great based on paint. It looked like it was one color, a little bit of shading, but not that great. So what you could do is I have a elder from NECA here who is it, who was this is the elder from the movie at the end. You can take his gun and we can take a look at that gun if you want. So it's pretty good on paint, I'll tell you that much. It's better than McFarlane. For the pictures I've seen, it's a lot better than McFarlane gun. Looks good. So it seems like McFarlane's just giving you a bunch of accessories throughout the movie, not a certain scene specific. You know the gun where he shoots the net on the, the gang war in the one uh, building? He shoots it, this net goes over him, and uh, it's like squishing his skin. It looks like it could be a holster because you see this opening right here. Like, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. If this is the actual gun itself, not the holster of it, then where's the handle? And why is there an opening, you know? Like, what the hell were you thinking? He also comes with his smart disc right here. It's pretty good. Sculpted nice. It's got the whole, you know, indent where the hand would go. All the circles where the fingers would go through. The smart disc cannot be placed to any of his hands from what I can tell. This one looks like it might, but it actually does not. Like, you see that? You would have to open up his hand. So this hand is pretty much useless. It can't hold anything. How about this one? This one is the same exact as the other hand as I mentioned earlier about the part right here. How I switched the hands. This one does not look like he can hold it either. No. As you can tell, you have to be right handed to control this. Because it's in his hand now. 
but uh, yeah it's on backwards you see it's right handed but you gotta have it on the opposite direction so whatever I guess that's the only way right and the smart disc can be placed onto his leg right here they put a peg right here which uh, doesn't look too much like a peg it actually looks like a piece of the disc so it goes in right here just fine you just gotta you know, push it in and that's it you're done it's not gonna fall off it's on there yep it's good and for the NECA Predator City Hunter accessories here is his staff well here it is uh, unextended and it's pretty cool it's sculpted a lot better I'd say it looks a lot more realistic slash like it the way it's supposed to be in the movie it's got the white part right here it's got a right here it's got like a little meter well I guess the, like you know the numbers some of the language from the predator that we don't understand so this is how it looks retracted you know fully in so you can carry it around and there's no feature for them to extend it out otherwise it would have looked like the McFarlane one so what they did is they gave you another one here it is fully extended all the way and I gotta say it looks a lot better than the McFarlane one due to the fact that it's got the right colors and it looks more like the actual movie looks good and uh, the middle part looks exactly like the retracted area so that's good. Where's uh I'm trying to oh it's right here. It's over here. Yeah. Here's the meter with the numbers on it. Can I get any closer? Oh it's so small. Also a changeable hand. So uh now so he has a total of three hands, the two that he has on and this extra one. This one is meant to uh hold the the, the staff right here. Yeah. So it actually works, you know, McFarlane hands don't really fit the staff too well. This one does. NECA gives you a changeable hand. And to change his hand, all you do is grab it and yank it off. It's actually not too easy, which is good because I don't want it to be loose. You just put it on. Ah, oh, you heard that snap? Damn. Here's the extended one. It looks good. It looks great. It looks way better. That's awesome. Way to go, NECA. He also comes with this trophy skull. Skull with the whole spine on it. So that's cool. And, um, uh, it's got a lot of good detail on it. Like, it's sculpted really well and it has, like, enough paint going on for, uh, where it needs to be to look weathering. That's awesome. Like, it's so small with all this detail. It's, it's insane. Like, it's great. But, uh, you can't open the mouth, so. It's a bit of a bummer, but I wasn't really expecting that. So that's good. And, I, and now that I think about it, this skull is more appropriate to the figure than uh, the other one that McFarlane came with, with the random alien slash whatever other species that's supposed to be. Also comes with this smart disc, which is pretty thin actually. Does not have that big peg sticking out. It's painted really good. It's like like a metallic burgundy brown reddish with some black shading on it looks good also got the shape for the hand kinda strange that NECA did not give us the hand that fits into this smart disc and they have done it before if I bring in another predator figure for you here is warrior predator or his official name is actually Ram but you can see right here he's got the disc and the disc hand for it so NECA has done it before so I'm not sure why they didn't give it to us. But with the way NECA designs these hands and how they're kind of pliable, you could get it to go in there. But uh, you're going to have to use some hot water for that. For sure, I'm pretty sure it would work. It's just it's going to permanently be in that position now. So that's up to you if you want to do it. I don't know why they didn't give us another changeable hand to put the disc in them. The smart disc can be placed into his holster here which is extremely detailed. Look at that. It's cool. Once it goes in, you just kind of squeeze it in. Unlike the McFarlane one, how we just like, you know, just peg it in. This one's different. You just kind of squeeze it in. And a lot of predators have this problem where you put it in and it just falls right out. So 
so far this city hunter works just fine so that's good so comparing the staffs here is McFarland and here is NECA fully small fully retracted it's right here and here is both of them retracted McFarland one looks too big doesn't look accurate in paint either but yeah but also I think they were trying to make this look like it's at night you know and here they are both extended they're around the same height I think NECA might be yeah NECA is slightly taller as you can see right there it's a little bit taller and when you compare the skulls the paint is pretty much similar just about good detail on both but I still say this one's more appropriate since in the movie he actually uses a skull he pulls out someone's spine takes off all the blood cleans it off and it looks like this this one he had nothing to do with it was just in the background in the trophy wall so McFarlane I don't know less appropriate skull but overall it looks like McFarlane gave you more accessories when comparing both smart discs McFarlane and NECA here it looks like the McFarlane one's a little bigger the NECA one's slightly smaller I'm not really sure why both of them pretty thin in uh, plastic form this one has the peg sticking out to go into the holster this one just kind of slides in so I'd say this the NECA ones are painted a lot better you know McFarlane trying to make it look like it's nighttime as usual but both companies didn't do the the other one the when the feature where the the disc actually opens up the way Danny Glover actually uses it in the movie neither company decided to do that I'm not sure why and now we'll get into the figures scope paint and size starting with McFarlane here McFarlane City Hunter his sculpt is pretty good for what he is he's, he's pretty good like I like how the feet look right here they're really nice how he doesn't have any sandals because I remember the jungle hunter he had sandals and the city hunter didn't he's just barefoot so that works sculpted pretty well the app crunch is uh, on the articulation here is a little little too much I'd say because you can clearly see it but it's not a big deal like you look at it and yeah it looks like the city hunter on his mask it's cool his hair is a little different though his hair is kinda like they are they are not individual they're kinda stuck together and when they get out here they're individual as they go out more it's not too bad but the hair is like uh, the way it's sculpted it looks kinda like, like as if he's running not like a huge difference but it's there like it's like he's kinda running it's not a big deal he does have his stuff down here his loincloth slash pouches right here looks good but it's all one piece one rubbery piece it does have the paint from the blood from the battle damage not a lot though but it's there yeah he's got the knee pads he's got the shin guards he's got one part of his uh, thigh cover over here and all the all the junk that he's got back here all his equipment so sculpt wise he's good and uh, paint however is different so far from what I see from pictures or even from the movie it looks like this figure is based on what he looks like at night and I guess it works because most of the movie is at night the only time you see him during the day is when he's cloaked he is invisible in his visible cloak so that's how they get away with it so that's fine the one thing I don't like though is the paint on the mask the mask is just one color it's like pure black with some kind of like maybe like dark orange or dark brown tint to it you can't really tell but from what I've seen from pictures the one I have came in a, a different uh, box like the box just said Predator 2 but uh, the actual Movie Maniacs one that one had a different box and the mask was actually painted different the mask was actually you know had some somewhat of the brown gold on it kind of so I guess it just kinda of depends which which McFarlane figure you buy you get better paint on the mask so that kinda of sucks that's ridiculous anyways he's got um, you know, his armor here it's actually removable if you wanted to it's rubbery piece but uh, you know what's annoying is uh, right here where it connects because you can take it off by unclipping it right here but uh I took it off once and I've never ever been able to put it back. I would have to actually glue it so it can stay in perfect place. 
Like it just doesn't stay anymore. So that's pretty annoying. And now it's all loose. Over here as well. Like, come on, man. It's stupid. But whatever, right? Anyways, he does have the plasma caster right here. The way it's positioned, this is where it goes right there. But it doesn't stay. Like, you see that? It just wiggles. It's sculpted in a way where it's supposed to stay right there. But it doesn't stay. So the way it works is it has a hinge up here. Right there, so you can go up. And you can turn it. So that's awesome. And the caster is sculpted in the way he has it. Because the Jungle Hunter had a different plasma caster. So that's good. It's painted really good. It's got some dark brown. Some shading on it. It's cool. He does have the, right here, the blades. So that's cool. But uh, what I don't like is the way you bring them out. You see this? Not only can you see through it right there. But here's a clip to actually, you know, get them out. So I don't really like how it sticks out that way. But the blades come out. They're, they're okay. Claws could be better, but they're not the worst either. Yeah, why not? It's passable. So on this side, he does have the bomb, which is something NECA has never done. And it opens right here. It hinges. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. Well, look at that. We even got the Predator writing in there. It's pretty neat. Plus, it's on the wrong side. Like, you see this? Why would it open on this side? How the hell are you supposed to look at it? What the hell, McFarland? What the hell? Anyways, he sculpted really well, painted nice, got some good hands on him. As I mentioned before, I, this is the different hand from the open mouth predator. That's why I don't have the part that unclips for the blood. Feet look really good. It's good. I just don't like how uh, how he's painted to look like how he does at night. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's fine because since he was dark in the movie. If you notice, the sculpting on his waist is a lot thin compared to like any other figure you can think of. This McFarlane figure, like, his waist is extremely thin. So if you took this off, you know, it would just look a little unproportioned. It's kind of strange. Now one of the best features of this figure here from McFarlane, you get a removable mask. You just take it off like that and it's that simple. It's awesome. Not enough detail inside, not a, not a big deal since you don't see it. The mask just fits on, just like that. And it doesn't fall off, it just kind of sits in there. And it's on a wire, and it goes on the, uh, on this actual, you know, his armor here. So it just kind of hangs there. So the face, face looks alright. Like the sculpt on his head looks really good, paint's pretty good too. But, uh, I don't know, man, like, I'll say the sculpt is good for the mandibles here, his teeth and everything. It's really good, but it doesn't quite, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't resemble the movie enough, I guess. There's something about it. I'm not sure if it's the paint due to the fact that it looks like he's, you know, taking place at night, doing something. Or, just like, why would he have his teeth so closed in? And the reason why is because of the mask. If he was, if this mask was not removable, his animals would be out more, or you know, like it's just so small, it's just impossible to do it. The other, the other version of this figure where his mouth's already open, that one has does not have a mask at all. Why? Because you can't put a mask on over his face because of his teeth. So they did what they could here. So for what it is, looks all right, but there's just something about it doesn't look quite right. Still a good job overall. And for his height, he is over seven inches, seven and a half, just about eight. Here we have Toy Biz Marvel Legends Punisher with the jacket of the, the Thomas Jane Punisher. Here is from Mattel DC Universe Classics, The Question. And uh, the Predators overtowering both of these figures. And that's fine because Predators are usually bigger than humans. So that's fine, but that's pretty damn big. Here we have from NECA, Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow from the first movie. And here we have from Mattel, Ghostbusters 2, Ray Stance. From the big pack where they all came together with Slimer and the Christmas hats. Anyways, height wise, he's pretty good. But uh, this Ghostbusters, same size as all the movie masters that includes Batman. You know, the, all the Dark Knight figures, Man of Steel, a few others. 
So he's way too small compared to this predator. So that's not good. But on the NECA side, he's pretty good in height. He's bigger than the average 6 inch. He's nearly 7, just about. Right under. And the predator matches a lot better in his size. So, so the McFarlane predator here goes with NECA figures. And for articulation, let's see what he can do. There's a swivel on his head and go left and right, just fine. And go down a little bit and go up as well. Shoulders are pin and socket. So then go up, forward, and go back as well. Side to side, just a little bit though, not much. And also he has uh, right here, he has uh, the butterfly joint, so you can go like this. That's cool. Bicep swivel. You can turn a bicep, swivel at the elbow, and right here at the wrist, swivel and hinge at the hand. However, this side, well, so far it's about the same. It's got the butterfly joint, all that stuff, but when he gets down to the wrist, it's different. There's no hinge at the hand, nor is there a swivel. Plus, it's kind of pre-posed right here at the elbow. Swivel, swivel at the elbow, but um, like you see how it is? It was meant to be like this, sculpt-wise. So that kind of sucks. So like, it's kind of like bent, so it looks weird. So on with the articulation, we got right here, the torso. He has this weird double ab crunch, I'm not really sure. So he has this torso joint, and the ab crunch right here, and then another one inside. So it's like three layers, which allow him to go forward, but not very much. Look at that. Not, not very far either. Well, I guess farther, okay. But forward, not much. I'm not sure why they went with that weird joint when yet it doesn't even work as well as it could have. It does have a waist twist at the bottom. That works, you can go all the way around. Bottom, we got um, underneath the loincloth. You can see he's got his underwear on. He's got a pin socket at the, the legs, so you can go forward. You can go back, but only that far though. And he can go side to side. Not much though. It does have thigh cut right here in the middle. It has one point at the knee. You can go this far. So at the ankle and hinge at the foot. So that's good. Oh, well, it's even got a sculpt on the bottom. That's awesome. Does that have peg holes on the bottom of his foot? But only this one. Not that one. Articulation is pretty good for back in the day. Not bad. And as for the NECA, when it comes to the sculpt and paint, let's take a look. It looks awesome. It looks really good. Look at the mask right here. It's really good. It's amazing. So from what I gather, the McFarlane figure was painted the way it looked like in the movie, as if it's taking place at night. This one here from NECA, looks like they try to give you uh, the colors how it would be during the day. So if you could see the City Hunter during the day, this is what he would look like. Which in a way I think is more appropriate because if you want your City Hunter to be looking at night, you would put him in a you know dark lighting. Because now you have him during the day, now it's just all dark. Anyways, back to the figure itself. Looks really good. He's got the armor all over. He's got the shoulder pads, rubbery pieces. He's got the the claws right here, which actually uh, I'd say extend a lot better. Like they look good, not extended. There's no ridiculous big clip sticking out. You just pull them out and they extend. That's really good. Most predators have that. I like that. The hands are sculpted. Really good. The hands. They're like just like you know like. Like they're ready to start charging. The legs are good. It's got the shin guards. It's got the knee pads as well. It's got the bare feet, just like the McFarlane one. The detail isn't as much as the McFarlane actually on the bottom here. It's got, but he does have two peg holes on the bottom of his feet. The McFarlane one only had one. But they did get the bare feet right. No sandals. This looks good. It's got all the electronic armor back here. I still don't really know what what it is, because who knows. We're only human, not predator, so we don't speak predator. He's got the armor on his thigh here. Looks good. He also has down here the loincloth, but it's like separated. Like, see, here's his, his I guess, his cup holder. <laughs> and uh, here he has, um, here's part of the loincloth, but it's a separate piece. And has the rubber, you know, like a, like a string going around it. Same thing with all the other stuff he has. His pouches right here. This one's actually on a string, like a necklace like a purse almost 
That's really good detail. However, they missed the part on this. Right here, the bomb. On his gauntlet, it's totally not there. I mean, you can argue, yeah, it's there. Look at it. Well, you know what? Here we go. Right there. That's where it's supposed to be. Right there. But it does not open. It does not open. No private in the history of NECA so far has been able to open, which is pretty sad. So yeah, the mask is really good. It's got better paint, that's for damn sure. I think the paint is better than the McFarlane one I showed you earlier, and the even the second McFarlane figure, the actual extra painted one, looks a lot better, I say. Sculpt is a little better on around the cheeks, and the hair are all individual. That's awesome. It's really nice. And they're painted really good and they're just down like the hair it's not sculpted like he's running because what if you don't want him running you know looks good for the plasma caster this one's a different design this is where it rests it's on a uh, right here the, the, the sculpt's good perfect but uh right here this is where it goes but to be honest it's not easy to move down like I can't even move it. Like I can turn it the way it could to go left and right, but I can't put it down there when it's resting. I can't really get it to go down there. And it might be due to the fact that this is too squished in, you know? So it makes it less easy to move. Maybe some hot water can fix it, and then it'll be able to go down there. So other than that, it works. The NECA City Hunter here also comes with that same feature that McFarlane did that spot where his gun's supposed to be to shoot the net it's right here as well but uh... it looks different like it's not like once again we have no handle but there's not a huge opening either there's a small one so here they are side by side NECA and McFarlane here they look nearly identical when it comes to uh... this gun here but I don't know why for some reason McFarlane has the huge opening it looks like the gun was actually meant to go in there the NECA one looks like they were actually having it there like as if it's already there there's no holster it is the gun the armor is not loose it does seem like a rubbery piece but it's been uh, glued on to the figure if anything so this part is kind of rubbery but uh, most of it it's it's not coming off it's not loose which I do like so they have multiple figures of this character they have one which is the one I'm showing you right now came the two pack with berserker also came a single carded came with the slightly goldish painted mask but there is no but there is no removable mask on this one it does not come off it's sculpted in a way to look like there is an actual face in there when it comes to the neck or you can see a skin back here it's cool but it does not come off and why didn't they do it because they didn't want a repeat of what McFarlane did how the teeth look kind of weird so what they did is, uh, not only can you get this figure with mask, but you can buy him single carded without the mask. They also came up with uh, another version where he had the gas mask over his face when he needed to breathe. And he has a lot more battle damage with the blood, because this one does not come with the blood. And also the hand comes off on that one, not this one. I would say the paint on the skin is a lot more spot on, a lot more movie accurate than the McFarlane one. This NECA one is a lot better. It's got like almost like tiger stripes, which I noticed he did have in the movie. The waist on this one's a lot better than the other one, the McFarlane one. This one's a lot better. It looks a lot more realistic. It works. If you took this off, it wouldn't look weird. But you can't take this off, by the way. It's on there. It's got his rubber butt. <laughs> to represent, he's got a diaper. So you can't see the joints. Ugh. It's kind of weird. It's really good. And for his height, he is over 7 inches. He is 7.5. Right? Just about 8, almost. And for the NECA City Hunter height here, we have, once again, this, the average 6-inch figures. we got Toy Biz Marvel Legends Punisher and Mattel's DC Universe Question. And he stands up to them the same height as McFarlane did to them. And for the movie set of figures, we got, once again, Mattel, Ghostbusters 2, Ray, and Pirates of the Caribbean from NECA, Jack Sparrow. So yeah, he's the exact same height as the McFarlane one.
NECA here matches up to them the same way he did. So he goes good with other NECA figures, other McFarlane figures, but not the Movie Masters Mattel line. And now let's get into NECA's articulation here. For the head, he has a ball jointed head. So he can go up only a little bit though. Can I look down? He can look straight. So go up and straight. He can look side to side just fine. And he can do the, the tilt, which I do like. It seems like they give you less articulation in the head than McFarlane did, but not gonna give you the ball joint so they can cover, you know, all kinds of aspects with just one joint. It's kind of smart. He does have pin and socket shoulders, so you can go all the way up, go side to side, a lot more than the McFarlane one. For the elbow, you can uh, bend it right there at one point and swivel it. At the wrist, ball joint in hand, so you can, you know, swivel it and go up and down and go this way. It's really good, you got a lot of movement. No ab crunch, sadly. They, they, you know, NECA was just on scope. They would want to make it look good. But they did give you, instead of a swivel at the waist, they gave you a ball joint. So you can swivel it just fine. You, can, you can't really go up and down much, but side to side is pretty good, not bad. And on the bottom, underneath his loincloth, for his legs, <clears throat> got the new articulation so he can go up pretty far and go back pretty far too and he can go out side to side that's good it does have the uh, right here upper thigh cut so that's good and double jointed knees so he can go this far up look at that whoa he'll be running and on the bottom of the ankle you only get one joint and that's the ball joint but it's good enough because you can go up and go back a little bit you can swivel it still and you can do your own ankle pivot like this so that's good so yeah so it seems like NECA gave you less articulation but the ball joints cover more than just one point so it kinda works and now for my final thoughts and the judgment on these two figures it seems like McFarlane here was going for the whole night look and give you more accessories especially to match uh, certain scenes with the whole hand coming off with the removable mask and uh, the staff, the skull from the end of the movie, the gun as well, his, uh, his kit patch, his kit patch with the first aid kit, and then the little plate. Man, that's actually a lot of accessories from McFarlane there. But they don't give you the open mouth. You have to buy another figure for that. It looks like NECA's version here is going for a little more accurate on paint detail when it comes to the character in general. The accessories though are kind of lacking. You get the, the skull trophy, which is a little more appropriate for him, and the changeable hand, so you can be charging or holding the staff. The staff is more accurate and a better choice, I'd say. So, so because now that it is more accurate, you get a, a second piece instead of the whole retraction device that they that McFarlane did, but it just doesn't look accurate now. But there's no removable mask. You would have to buy another version of that. Or if you want to battle damage at all, you would have to get another version of that. So that's a total of three figures to get a, one, a certain scene specific with this one. Ah, uh, it's kind of tough, man. I still like this one. This figure being 10 years old now, it still holds up quite a bit. One thing NECA has over McFarlane is it has the, the strings with the pouches on it. McFarlane does not. McFarlane's claws are too small. NECA's are large and accurate. Both figures don't have the hands to hold the smart disc. The armor is too loose on this one. It's staying on permanently on this one. This one has uh, pre-sculpted arms in a way. This one has pre-sculpted torso. I'm gonna have to say the winner is the NECA version. I would say he's just a more executed action figure. Sculpt's a little better, he doesn't have that skinny waist. He's got a way better paint job. A more appropriate skull. Sure we can we could have used the whole bomb opening and closing feature. But I guess the fact that we don't have it, it's not too big of a problem for me. McFarlane figure, still pretty good. It does have the bomb feature on his wrist, but the, way, the fact that it opens backwards feels kind of like an insult from McFarlane. McFarlane is not a bad figure at all. It's still a really good figure. The NECA one wins not by much. So if you're still, you know, on the verge of buying one of them, but you know which, I say you can go good either way. Either one is pretty damn good. My choice would have to be the NECA. Not by a lot, but I, I still would choose it. So, on that point, congratulations NECA, and thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think. Who would you pick? Alright, see you next time.